This tutorial covers all the options in the iSpring QuizMaker Properties window. To go to the Quiz Properties window, click Properties on the toolbar. At the top, you can choose the type of quiz, graded or survey. Now we'll cover the options in the main section. Here you can give the quiz a title and change the size and aspect ratio. You can also set a passing score and percentage or points and choose how the score is displayed to the user. Set a time limit by checking this option and entering the time in minutes and seconds. Set the number of attempts to take the quiz here in this dropdown. Choose the level of the feedback to give to users here. If you choose to send quiz results to an email or server, you can ask the quiz taker for information that you can use in this process. Click the Customize button to configure the form they need to fill out at the beginning of the quiz. There are several default fields available, and you can add your own custom fields as well. In this column, choose which fields are mandatory, optional, or invisible. Here you can prompt your users with default values, for example if they all work for the same company. These buttons let you add and delete fields and change their order. Click OK when you're done. Now let's go to the navigation section. There's a drop down list of presets available, which alter these options below. You can submit one question at a time and allow users to postpone questions, or submit them all at the end of the quiz and allow users to finish without answering all questions. The question pool options let you decide whether to show all question groups or a random sample. You can also shuffle questions in the groups. Now let's go to question defaults. These options will apply to all new questions you add. If the Use Default Options checkbox is checked on a question, these are the options that will be used. You can set points, penalty, and attempts, shuffle answers, allow partial answers, waive penalties for unanswered questions, allow users to skip survey questions, and set a time limit. Down here are the default feedback messages for correct, incorrect, and partially correct answers. You can also go to the more advanced editor to add multimedia, hyperlinks, and bulleted lists, and change font styles. Click OK when you're done. Finally, let's go to the results section. These actions will be performed when the user finishes the quiz. You can set different options for pass and fail. When the user clicks the finish button, you can either close the browser window or send them to a website of your choice. If you'd like to execute JavaScript after the quiz, check this option and click Customize to go to the JavaScript editor. Here in this dropdown, you'll see a list of variables, and here you can set the target window. When you're done, click Save. If you like, you can send quiz results to the email address you specify. You can also configure detailed results by checking this box and clicking Customize. Here you can change the email sender. If you use the option to collect user info from the main section, you can check this option to use their name and email. Here is the subject of the results email, and here is the disclaimer that will be included in the email. Down here is a list of values which will be included in the results. You can customize them if you like. To reset your changes, click Reset. When you're done, click OK. The other option for sending results is a server. Enter the address of the script on your server that you'll use to parse quiz results. To learn more, click this link. If the report is not sent for some reason, such as a bad connection on the user's side or a bad script on your server, you can check this option so the user won't be able to go back and review the quiz. Once you're done configuring all the quiz properties, click OK. Did you like this video? Give it a like and subscribe to the iSpring YouTube channel for more updates.